Jeffrey Boot is joining us, uh, Minister of DEFRA, of course, and uh, Glenn Faber and Peel, MHK. Year two, still the ministership? You're still enjoying it? You're going to tell me everything's fine? Well, of course it's fine. Um, well, no, you, no you flowers. Uh, uh, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, like sorry that. about that. Uh, uh, yeah. yes. uh, no, no, no. Uh, things are going well. I think uh, mm-hmm. not just for the government, uh, but for the administration generally, and certainly within our department, uh, things seem to be uh, well on target. We've, we've achieved quite a lot over the last year. In fact, over the two years. Mm. Um, it's, it's not just me. It's the department. We're pulling together. We cover a lot of ground. But uh, yes, we're moving forward. Let's talk about. Um, Boats, set sh- ships, and uh, obviously fishing. That's that seems to be still one that you did. You handle it totally right. You you wanted to stop the Scots, then you, they they went and got the uh, you know their SMPs involved, and you had a backtrack. I mean, just remind us because where well, did that all we, go we, to? We didn't backtrack. What we were we were in an interim period. We knew that there were problems, so we had to bring uh, something into force as quickly as possible. So we bought um, what was a, a mandatory. Uh, uh, requirement for people to call into a Manx port before leaving our territorial sea. Um, at the same time, we were consulting uh, with other jurisdictions. The Scottish were correct. It was fairly onerous on them having to come all the way back in terms of uh, time and fuel. Um, but we came to a compromise that actually worked a lot better. Having researched our uh, legislation, we found that we can uh, call uh, owners as well as skippers uh, to account and in fact our enforcement has improved dramatically since then and there have been a number of uh, highlighted cases and well publicised which resulted well, in large fines and I think generally the fishing industry is bought into this better enforcement regime. Yeah but some of those fines were actually Manx fishermen wasn't they? I mean, I mean staggering actually that story, the story how it was people that should know better should we say. Well, that sadly that uh, people do make mistakes and things yeah. go wrong, um, but I, I think that that's the, the name of the game. Um, I mean, we were talking about that just this morning in the department, and it's zero tolerance really. Mm-hmm. You know, if there are genuine mistakes, sometimes you can you can overlook that and you can issue a caution. But where people break the rules, if if everyone breaks the rules, we end up with a fisheries policy where we have uh, stock monitoring and we know what we're doing. We set total allowable catches and bag limits. And if people break that, then next year there won't be stock to fish, and we won't have a sustainable industry. Everyone's got a beeper on their boat these days. Is that made it easier in the sense for policing? You know where everyone is at yes, least. Yes, yes. Uh, vessel monitoring goes on yeah. in real time all the time. And we've been out on your ship. You know, the one that monitors. That I mean, that's you, been you came busy. out with. The yeah, city, yes, I mean, yes. that keeps itself busy. Does that I mean? You yes, yes, yes. We use it as much as we can. Um, obviously, there are limits on hours and uh, crewing requirements. But yes, um, when the king scallop season starts yeah. uh, in a few weeks' time, they will be out there um, uh, because it's all very well monitoring things on on, on a computer screen and mm. you know what they're doing and you can monitor the catches that they, they declare when they land but sometimes it's nice to get on board and just see what's going on. Not everyone is breaking the rules, in yeah. fact most people don't, they play by the rules. And, and how does Brexit, I mean all this business, I mean even last year we were talking about London had withdrawn from something like last year you know, with fishing. I mean, overall, the London this Convention. Was, yeah, I mean overall must must be a complete nightmare, the, the potential Well for my department difference. it is, um, it's one of the departments that's, that's most affected, I mean you look at agricultural products produce, uh, fisheries, veterinary produce, um, waste uh, disposal, licensing, um, they all fall in the Brexit gambit. And we've, we've done an estimation and it's around 90 pieces of primary secondary regulation uh, that will require amending as a result of Brexit. And that, that's a heavy burden yeah. for the department. And the problem is we don't know what's going to happen at okay. the moment. I need to get back onto you more than anything. I'm just drifting slightly off there. How have you had, uh, you know, how do you f- view your last year? How well, have you done? Well, as I said earlier, you know, my successes are the department's successes. Oh, okay. And uh, my, my successes uh, within the government uh, are, are a collective effort. We, we work together. And I think uh, generally, as, as a council of ministers, we work very well together. Everything okay there? Yes, yeah, yeah everything's good. Um, obviously, we had the hiccup uh, with Mrs. Beecroft uh, uh, last year or Christmas last year. Um, but I think David Ash is uh, doing a good job. Did you think she had to go as well? I mean, well, it was it was sad, um, but uh, that, that that's the way these things pan out. And uh, she had been not well and mm. uh, missed quite a lot of meetings, um, and uh, she had lost uh, the confidence of her department members and I think her, her CEO and senior officers. So I guess there comes a point when departure is uh, inevitable. Uh, other things you're looking forward to this coming year? Anything you you know you could want to put through? Well, what I'm anything? looking forward to is knowing what Brexit's going to deliver. Yeah. Well, um, good luck with that one. Uh, yes, if we, I mean, we work uh, well with 
DEFRA, and I have to be fair to the, the UK administration, they are keeping us informed on the fisheries side, the agricultural side, but at the same time, we don't know where it's going. So we've got this contingency plan, that contingency plan, and uh, once we know, that'll be good news for us. But in terms of business as usual, um, we've got the King Scallop season starting soon. We've now got a, a combined scallop board. We've got a new uh, chairman there. Um, we're setting total allowable catchers, bag limits in advance. So we've made a lot of progress there. You enjoying it in your d where you are? Do you want to yeah, move at all? Yes. I mean, oh, is no, that no, 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 no. <laughs> move, no. No, I enjoy uh, working in DEFRA, and I, th I think it takes a while to, to, to get the measure of things. And uh, I'd like to think I've now got the measure of the department. Right. And it is a department with a wide range of responsibilities. It's not just agriculture, fisheries forestry, we've got planning, okay. uh, building regulations. I want to get back onto you though. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. okay, let's focus last, back. Last year, I think I said, are you a nine to five politician? Other people whispered to me afterwards, it's more a question of, are you a Monday to Friday politician? And I think people alluding to you always seem to be flying here, flying there, going on holidays or whatever you might want to call it. You've got other interests. And I, I did touch that last year. You definitely said you, that you were committed 100%. Do you, do you, what do you say to that sort of thing when someone says that you're, well, you're I, I a Monday to Friday politician? I'm not a Monday to Friday politician. Yeah. Um, frequently, uh, I'm on parade at the weekends. In fact, with food and uh, drink festival yeah. uh, a week or two ago, uh, royal show, southern show. Um, most weekends, uh, uh, I'm, I'm attending something. Tomorrow, it's a Macmillan coffee morning. Mm. We have a surgery once a month. We're taking this in September, by the way, so all these things are, are yeah, being may, may yeah, moved on by then. Yes. Okay. But uh, I should also say, Paul, um, as a minister, you are on parade, duty, call it what you will, yeah. 24 hours a day. How, how do you split your time then between you know, constituency work and your work for the government? Do you, do you answer that PAG question? Did you go for well, it? Well, I, I did go for it and I found it a very difficult one to answer. I think everyone said the same to be fair. Uh, because, you know, if I go to the food and drink festival, is yeah. that government business? Yeah. Is that sort of constituency business? Because I'm I meeting guess, people yeah, and, and some it, of my... And it'll change week by week. But what's a rough sort of idea? What did you say? Well, I would say that around 30% of my time is, quite high. is taken up on constituency matters. But that also includes evening commitments and weekend commitments. Mm -hmm. uh, during the week, obviously, it's more government commitments in terms of DEFA. Mm. But even then, uh, there's, there's, there's stuff going on around. And you, I find that to, to, to manage my life, uh, uh, I, I need to be on top of what I'm doing. So I would rather address issues as they come up, particularly email correspondence, telephone calls, as they arise, rather than let them build up. Okay. Do you get on well with your colleague for the area? That's Mr. Harmer, isn't it? I mean, yes, yes. You're both ministers, so you've both got a lot of things to go on. Is Peel and Glenn Faber not getting enough? I think they're probably uh, doing very well. Oh, okay. uh, you know, uh, in terms of where we're going, I mean, the Peel sewage works, it was a little... Uh, a, a waiver there at one stage with the ENI committee, um, but we overcame that, so that's going ahead. Um, there's lots of things going on in Peel, and certainly we don't neglect our constituencies. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would say that they, on balance, probably benefit from having ministerial access, and uh, I'd like to think that they feel that way, and uh, I certainly not had any complaints. There are occasions when, particularly as uh, head of planning de facto, uh, I find it difficult to interact with constituents on planning matters. Uh, because it, it puts me in a conflicted situation, and I apologise for that. But mm. uh, Mr. Harmer is there, and obviously is not involved in planning. So we we work together. We hold joint surgeries, and I think we get on very well. And, and, and just other things, that big things you've had to deal with. I mean, the meat, meat plant is you, isn't it? Such, but you don't. You delegate that to Tim Baker, I think. But is well, we is it delegate it. Uh, how's it work? T t Tim Baker is now uh, chair of the Arms Length uh, Company. Um, where That's we, working, we, is it? It's working. Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, we we reviewed the figures and we had the first uh, sort of real review uh, in the last few weeks. Just so remind me, do we own it or not? I mean, say, we, did yeah. government own it or not? No, no, no they well, do own it. Don't in they? essence, we own it. Yes, the government owns the meat plant. We've got a golden share and we own it. Yes. Um, so, but, but it, then you have it arms length. It's arms length. It's like uh, steam packets. Going to be is it the same sort well, of the same sort of thing? You you have a commercial board um, who operate and there's some political oversight, but Tim is not the department member when he is chair of the meat plant. I mean, he is, but he's not. He's acting as a commercial uh, director of that company. Is this sorted now then? Because it's all going very quiet, I have to say. Well, so well, is, that, is that a good sign? It, it, is the meat plant sorted? Well, no, it, it, it's one of those ongoing uh, sagas. Tim is doing a good job with the board. Um, so there's still it, trouble there, is it? It's certainly on a firm foot. It's not trouble. Um, throughput's up. Um, there are still issues that are required resolving, and, and there will be. Are farmers still selling c cattle away? 
Yes, yes, well, some, some are, but that's always going to be the case. Oh. This just gives it another uh, avenue to market. I mean, we, we, we're never going to capture everything. In fact, we can't process everything with a meat plant uh, at the moment. Um, I would like to see more throughput, uh, extract more value for, for Manx farmers from it, and more local produce sold or local produced meat sold locally. I think mean, it would be excellent to have access, for instance, uh, to Tesco's, um, which we that's we still are, off the list. Is we it are working on that. Isn't that been annoying? Cause it was years ago on the list, but now it's, it, seems it was on, and then it was off. Yes. And uh, there's a new manager there, and I think local produce uh, streams are becoming more uh, relevant to their business model. So I'm hoping that in the near future we'll make some progress there. But in saying that, our local butchers certainly have stood up and uh, t taken the challenge and uh, there's some really good uh, Manx meat produce out there in the market sold through local butchers. Okay, it's been a tough year for farmers, hasn't it, with uh, the drought and, and all that sort of thing. Did you react quick enough, do you think? You offered them a bit more money up front or something, didn't you? Well, we didn't offer, uh, yes, well, we, we, know, we've given them their, 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 their ABS payment uh, a a so bit early. in advance, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, Is that we enough? Give them 10%. No, it's probably not enough. And uh, there is a scheme going before Timwold uh, in uh, October, um, which we've worked through with the NFU. And uh, I think that we, we will satisfy some of the requirements there. Farmers had a double whammy this year. And uh, it, 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 it was a late winter. Uh, there was really no spring. Um, those that uh, sowed winter crops probably did reasonably well. But those that sow, uh, sowed spring crops, uh, they grew a bit and then we had a drought and mm -hmm. it was a great summer I'm not complaining too much uh, I, I, but I, well, I'll come to that in a <laughs> second from actually. a farmer's point of view yeah, it was not good news it, well um, and non-farmers will always say well it's always going to be a problem isn't it because there's always it's too this it's too that or whatever but um, it depends how extreme it is um, from our perspective we, we want to keep animals on island we want to make sure farmers can feed them we don't want any animal welfare issues um, one of my uh, fears and I think the fear of uh, the, the, the MNFU was that you know farmers would make a decision to sell animals when they could keep them on island if they had a little bit of money uh, to help uh, with feed, fodder, bedding, etc. over the winter period. So we're addressing those issues and of course some of the vegetable farmers and people who sowed spring crops, they almost had total failures in some cases because of the drought. So mm. you, you have to look at it. We, we, we commissioned some research um, Andersons who are, are renowned for this sort of uh, research into farming and despite uh, rhetoric uh, from some people that farming is very profitable with subsidising rich landowners and all the rest of it, the majority of farmers on the Isle of Man would not be in business if they didn't receive some form of subsidy from government. Mm. And when we look at our biosphere status and the environment generally and the way the island looks, that's done by farmers. Mm. And uh, if farmers weren't there doing this, and I've seen this in other jurisdictions, then we end up with fields full of gorse, brambles, and the island won't look the way it is at the moment. Well, you mentioned summer, and your interaction on social media didn't go down well with you having a barbecue, did you? When, and the host pipe ban and everything else ban, and don't, don't do this. You were, your department telling people, don't go out and have barbecues, wasn't it? And then well, you it, were caught. It, to be fair, it was I say it, caught. It, it you, were, you actually no, told I posted it. You posted it. I don't you yes, couldn't yes, make it any more yes, bizarre yes. if you tried. You actually <laughs> put was, a picture. It was in our extended back garden. Well, that's a very uh, nice big garden. Yeah, 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 yes, yes, yeah. Well, uh, so, uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, but it did raise attention to the matter, didn't it? So, do you regret uh, that, though? Um, regret, yes, I suppose, in retrospect, <laughs> yeah, I could have been more circumspect, but never mind. It, Is that it, the only cock up, though, of the year? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's the one that was found out, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, no, no. No, uh, no it, it was, it, 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 in retrospect, it was something yeah. I wouldn't have done, but sure. uh, on the day, it looked nice. Um, we had a little barbecue, <laughs> the view was lovely, <laughs> the sun was shining, so. I remember seeing the picture going myself at the time, thinking, okay, but uh, yeah, yeah. I left others to uh, pick it up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, uh, well, we'll finish off with uh, a rating. I think, um, you didn't want to do it, but you came in at 7.5, I think, last year. We were even liking 0.5 last year, but we gave you that. 7.5 you gave yourself overall for you, your, your effort. And this year it is? I would say it, it's, it's moved up a notch as I've, I, I've learnt the job in DEFA and uh, know what's going on. Um, and uh, also, uh, I think I get better interaction with the constituency now because Peel was new to me. Uh, I'm now more familiar with Peel, so I give myself an eight. That's a good answer. I mean, you know, it's nice to hear going up. And speaking from inside the tent, as I always call <laughs> it, it's, you know, you are government. How do you think they are doing it? as a collective now? This is. Well, I think and, and the whole the whole 24 of you, you know. Yes, well, I, I think as a collective, as Parliament, I think we're doing 
well, um, and I think uh, you know the, 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 the new members have settled in well, and uh, the scrutiny that's going on, and the interaction between uh, you know government, as it were, and the parliamentarians is, is good. Um, there are some hiccups, as always, and uh, you know some detailed questioning does come out. But in terms of government itself, if you look at our program for government achievement so far, we've got I think over 70 items that are green or complete. And uh, we're working through that program to govern for government, and and we're making good progress. Now, if you measure you're progress, media training. I, I just have the simple number, and you're giving me all this. That's fine. I'm a politician, no, of course. In, you know, yes, yes, and yes. media trained. <laughs> right. Well, how much do you rate? That? Well, no, I, 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 you know, n I, nothing is a hundred percent, and and uh, we know that, th that there are some things that are, aren't quite right, or we, could, we yeah. could do better. So I would say government as a whole is a, probably an eight as well. So that's and and, and, I, and, and well. I'll apply that to my. Uh, uh, Parliamentarians uh, uh, back benches as well. I think they're, they're doing well, and uh, I, I enjoy the interaction. And uh, I, th I think, as a parliament, when I look at what happens in other jurisdictions with party politics and what have you, I think we hang to well, hang well together.